Are, are you there? Learn from God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created, and this is where we are going to look at a very important thing here. Why? Because in the past, we assumed that God created one person, right? Let's examine this scripture. God created man in his own. In the image of God, he created him. Semicolon, right? Do you understand what is there? When you are studying the Bible, everything in the Bible have, have its own meaning. Semicolon means he is going to explain who this man is. Unfortunately, we were taught years back, and sometimes I tell people, I will now why. And you are looking at this gentleman here. No, look at the man he's talking about here. He created man his own image. And that man equals him. Do you agree? Oh, we are analyzing the Bible. I don't have, I'm not holding anything. No. So I'm reading from the Bible. He created man in his own image. Who is this man? Don't assume. Our major problem as Christians is assumption. We, we, we try to assume. No. The Bible has its own key. That open itself. Over the years, the reason why Christian though, we are having challenges is that we assume. Now we read that God created man, and we are now assuming, okay, okay, then no. Who is this man? This man, it calls him. Then it opens it to a male and female, he created them. So the very first day God created this man, it was two people put together. I don't know whether you're getting it now. You are reading from your Bible. Is it in your Bible? No, is it in your Bible? All right. So this man, that an average Christian go around and say, hey, women, shut up. You, you are after thought. No. The very first day God created man, marriage was created. Check it right. Marriage is here. Look at it. This man was one single person standing there. But he had the male ship and the female component put together. Now, when you're talking about male and female, you're talking about your spiritual and psychological elements coming together. So that man had both the woman and the man put together, standing right before God. So to you, it is one person standing there. But before God, God was looking at two people. You may not agree now, but don't worry. Look at the next verse so that it will help you to understand. So one person stand before God. Yet when God was blessing him, he didn't say, I'm blessing you. Look at the second. Then God blessed them. God blessed them. Meanwhile, it is only Adam standing before God. There's some confusion in the Bible. God blessed them. Don't never open your mouth to say women are afterthought. And I know some of you will be confused. Ah, but it was in the book of Genesis chapter 2 that God, yes, I'm going to explain to you. I have to lay this foundation. Because when it comes to marriage, an average Christian don't understand marriage. I'm sorry to tell you this. That's why I was so excited when I was invited. Marriage is so deep. And that's why many people will perish because of marriage. The very first day God created this man, the whole foundation was built on marriage. How? God put two people together. Join them together to represent him. Now, before you even think of marriage, let me clear this. And this is why when you meet another, for those of you who are now in a relationship, and as a pastor, you know, people can, especially the young guys, but what do you want to marry? You know, the, the Bible said, you know, we need to multiply. So, pastor, don't go around saying this again. It's wrong. L- l- Say who now? Okay, You are misquoting the scriptures. Check it. Check it. Here, yeah, God is blessing these two people put together. God blessed them, and God said to them, "Join me." We are reading now. Today, tonight, we are not going to do anything different. We are doing what we have been doing here. Huh? Eh? So they won't read the Bible. So you are just continuing what you have been doing, right? God said to them, "Be fruitful." Don't even attempt to go to the next verse or to understand the word fruitful here. The first dimension of your blessing is that you must be fruitful. What does it mean? And every Christian will be thinking about, okay, okay, what, what do you understand by fruitfulness? God is telling you, this is how I'm going to bless you. And for you to function in this blessing, you must be, what does it mean? Fruit in what 
he doing? Huh? Increase in what he doing? Increase in what he doing? Any other person? Oh, please. Chine Wajuna. Chine Wajuna. Uh-huh. Product, God bless you. Now, one aspect of fruitfulness, all that you've said is good, is that fruitfulness means function in your purpose. This camera standing here is fruitful, you know what? Because it is capturing. The moment that cameraman be say, ain't a year, no, obey two a call to not say, or yana ye be participating. These bobs are here because they are functioning in their purpose. See, a sub bob when you may win and so you be to tuning in. So the first dimension of your life as a person is you must discover who you are. You must discover your purpose. You must discover why you exist on this earth. That's the first dimension. Do you know who you, who you are? Now the point is, well, tonight I'm not going to, I won't waste much time here. We are just introduction. We have other important things to talk about. Now when you're able to discover who you are, then the next statement will make meaning to you. What does it mean? Multiply. That word multiply is not biological. One or bank down will send you just say it no. And every Christian Jesus said, I will know. Look at this. When you are fruitful, the next dimension multiply. Reproduce your kind. You can choose say, okay, this is my understanding. But even if you give birth, it means you must reproduce that person. So it's not just enough to give birth to a child who do not behave like you, who do not worship God like you, who do not understand God like you, you have failed because you couldn't reproduce yourself. So it does not just mean go and give birth. Perhaps you understand that way, no problem. But the understanding is that you must reproduce, you multiply. Can you imagine today we have Christians who are giving birth to drug addicts? Are you multiplying yourself? Hello? Can you imagine we have pastors today whose children are vagabonds? Are we multiplying ourselves? So it means we are not in that dimension of the blessing of God. Over the years, we have reduced this to only childbearing. And all we talk about, say, I will, I will fool the exchange. I mean, one pet. Over who I will, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you. And I say to the glory of God, that's why Jesus came to this earth. He lived in this. He was fruitful, right? He knew his assignment. He lived his assignment. What did he do? Multiply. He reproduced himself in people. Jesus never gave birth to one child biologically. But there are millions, billions of people today who are representing Jesus. Who are he multiplied himself into the people. Look at the next verse. When you are able to multiply, then you must fill the earth. That's what throughout this earth, Jesus is there. Throughout, Jesus is everywhere. And finally, subdue it. That's what Christianity cannot be destroyed. That power has been released unto us. He never gave birth to one child, yet he fulfilled the scriptures. You understand why now the book of Psalms will tell you children are heritage from the Lord. The gift of the, the womb is a reward, which means it's not about giving birth biologically or not. I have the mandate to multiply myself. How? When I discover who I am, when I discover my mandate, then I have the mandate to multiply, train people, help people to become like me, build my understanding in them, put my spirit in them. Another Christian don't understand the foundation of life. So all we care about is that no Baba da. So we have irresponsible Christians. All we care about, they are quote the Bible. Bible see and will nourish us as a summa. And Christ answer will only be you. This interpretation of scriptures I'm an Christianity too meaning. Because we have people to, in, in churches today who don't have the spirit of God in them. We need to multiply ourselves. But have you multiplied yourself? Have you, are you even fruitful yourself? Do you even know who you are? Do you even know your purpose on this earth? Do you even know yourself? Do you even know why God created you? You have a mandate to be on this earth. Because of you, millions are dying. Can you imagine that you have been ordained as a healing minister? And because you've not, you've not, you've not identified yourself, do you know?